of the message because we're going to have a couple quick meetings when we get done this evening. Math, uh, Mark chapter number 10, very familiar scripture, we'll read and I'm just going to make a couple of comments tonight and, uh, and talk about the bus ministry and how thankful I am that our church is in the bus ministry and believes in the bus ministry and uh, we ain't about to quit, nowhere near it, amen, hallelujah. It's discouraging. The devil fights us all the time, but that just lets me know we're going in the right direction after bus kids. So let's uh, look in Mark chapter 10 this evening, verse 13, and the Bible said here, and they brought young children to him. These people brought young children to Jesus. Did you see that? They brought young children to Jesus. People say, well, I think their parents ought to bring them. I do too, I do too. But what if they don't? And what if they're drunk? What if they won't? The Bible said they brought them kids to Jesus, period. That he should touch them. Not for a crowd, not for a number. That he should touch them. That's why they brought them. That he should touch them. It ain't worth it just for a number on the board. It, it's to, that the Lord will touch them. That's why we're in the bus ministry. And, and uh, his disciples got all mad and all self-righteous and said, ah, we don't believe in that, using gimmicks, and we don't believe in that, stuff like that. And the Lord saw it in verse 14, and he was much displeased. And I think, you can check me on this, give you a good study, that's the only time in the New Testament where it said Jesus was much displeased. When the woman was caught in adultery, it didn't say he's much displeased. When they were selling stuff in the temple, it didn't say he was much displeased. But when these people started saying, get these kids out of here, we don't want these kids around here, they're messing up everything, the Bible said he was much displeased. He cared about them kids. And the Bible said, suffer the little children to come to me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not excuse me, receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And here's what I hope he'll do to our bus kids next week. And he took them up in his arms and put his hands on them and blessed them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I got to think about uh, Ethan and Molly. And, you know, we've had them uh, now for, uh, oh, it'll soon be a year in, in September and all that and how that the Lord reached down and touched them. And I think it was uh, Melanie, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure, who originally found them. If I'm wrong on that, somebody, somebody correct me. It might have been Kim, Corey, uh, my, uh, at that time. Might have been, I'm not sure. But uh, one of them went to their little trailer and found them. And you know what the Lord did? The Lord took them up in his arms and put his hands on them and blessed them. So tonight... I'm going to talk about the bus ministry just a little bit. And my burden for the bus ministry began, you've heard that testimony, many years ago with a, a conversation with Linda Hout uh, one night after we went visiting. I, when I first started preaching, I, want, I knew I wanted to be an independent, Bible-believing, Baptist, King James only Bible preacher. I knew they were the closest to what the Bible taught than any other group. I still believe that, by the way. And, uh, and I wanted to preach the Bible. And there were so many of them guys that preached against the bus ministry. And I was 24 or 5 years old, and I didn't want them to think I was some kind of compromiser or something. So I, I, I was reluctant to get into the bus ministry. But I'd go hear these old preachers like Hiles and some of them guys, and they were busting in kids by the hundreds of thousands. I said, man, I want to do that. And then I'd go to some of these camp meetings, and some of these other preachers say, bless God, uh, you can get them in with a hot dog and run them off with a hamburger. And everybody would shout and wave their hands. And I thought, man, Lord, are these are godly men. Are, are they right? Are, they, are you not supposed to give nobody a hot dog? Is it wrong? And, uh, and then I thought, I'd go hear the other preachers preach, and they'd say, look, Jesus brought them in there, fed the 5,000, preached to them. And then I'd hear another preacher say, bless God, he's using gimmicks. If the gospel don't get them, they ain't going to get God. And I, 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 I had all kinds of mixed feelings about it. One night, 
We went on visitation, knocking on doors. We came back up there uh, at, at New Manor, sitting in the in the foyer there of the old the old building, the old old building, uh, original one. And and me, Linda Howe, three or four people. We had about seven or eight people went visiting that night. And I remember we were sitting around the floor like this. And I said, let's just take some prayer requests and pray. And Linda started saying, she said, Danny, she was keeping foster kids at that time. And Linda said, Danny, she said they brought a kid in the other day that somebody had held that kid down and took cigarettes and just burned its little body. And then she said somebody else filled a bathtub about that deep with scalding hot water, as hot as they could get it, and held it like an 18-month-old. It burned all the back of its legs, its bottom, its back, and burned that kid in a bathtub. And something happened to me that evening. I'll never forget it. It was like something just broke my soul. God, I don't care who likes it, who don't like it. Lord, those little kids need rescued. Somebody needs to care about them. That could have been one of my kids. That could have been one of my grandkids. And by the grace of God, I've been in the bus ministry ever since then. That was 1980, maybe somewhere along 81, somewhere along in there. I've been in the bus ministry ever since. And I, I will. it's harder now than it was then. It's very hard now. It's hard to keep them going. It's hard to keep them uh, financed. It's hard to keep workers. It's hard to keep drivers. It's hard. The devil fights it because he hates the bus ministry. He hates every boy. He hates every girl. He hates every single person that rides in buses. He hates them. You hear me tonight? We are in rescue mission, people. This is a rescue mission. Not many churches doing it anymore. They say, well, it's a liability. It's a risk, and it sure is. But I'll tell you one thing. Uh, there, I, there's somebody out there waiting. Somebody, some little kid out there waiting that somebody will come and take them to church. We see bus kids all the time that they look for their bus workers. We went to a house yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I went to knock on the door, and I went to knock on the door like that, and I didn't hit it, and it had a sign on the door, shining light, do not knock. <laughs> uh, uh, kids are gone to Florida. I, I like that. And, and I thought, you know what? That's a compliment. That's a compliment, brother. They know shining light is going to be there. Glory to God. I, hallelujah. I took that as a great compliment. I said, Hell, I'm glad we go to a church. They didn't say, oh, well, it's, it's about the 4th of July. They'll never come on this weekend. Oh, no, no. Them people's crazy. They'll come anytime. They'll come Christmas. They'll come July the 4th. They'll, and I said, thank God you better believe we will. You know why? Because we believe that we are in the greatest work in the whole world. I believe it. I believe it. All right. I'm going to show you a little something here tonight. And, uh, and, and, and part of this, you, you've seen, uh, maybe not, not this one. This is sort of a new one, I think. And I just thought it'd be a blessing to you. It lasts about four minutes. And uh, if I can get a picture here in just a minute, fellas, uh, you, you can get the sound and the lights, okay? Uh, uh, I'm going to talk about the greatest outreach in America, and that, of course, is the bus ministry, okay? All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see if I can get it on. I might have to go get my, my thingamajig. There it is. All right. All right, let me start it over again. That's it. Amen. Okay, Jimmy, as soon as it gets going, you can... Uh... All right, come on. Get it up. is dying his sisters are crying words sent for Jesus to come time passes by Lazarus does die all hope and faith are gone little did they know the just Yep, man. Resurrections just down the road. There's no need to worry when hope's gone. There's hope. 
Amen. Somebody's Just life. There's no need to worry. When hope's gone, there's hope. You may need God's mercy. May be there today. But I've got good news. Jesus is the way. Resurrections. Just I've got another one that I'm going to show you in a minute. I'm going to make just a couple of comments here. Number one, number one, the bus ministry is the greatest outreach of the church in America. In America, not, not overseas, in America. Many churches have no outreach whatsoever. We have a, a man who comes here to visit our church regular. And the church where he goes is dead, I mean pitiful, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, deader and deader and dead. Uh, a funeral home would have more light. And, and I sort of asked him, I said, man, why do you go there? He said, my wife. My wife makes him just about. And they have no outreach whatsoever. Some churches have sing-ins. And they get a big singing group and have a singing group in. Nothing wrong with that having a big time. I've been a lot of times been singing and that's okay and occasionally people come and get saved but about all you're going to get with singing groups is other people from other churches who like singing and they're already saved. Other churches uh, put up signs, put up billboards, especially in big cities like Charlotte. Nothing wrong with that. That's good. We got one out there and I firmly believe in that. That's good. Other churches, uh, if they're really it's rare, but go give out tracts or, or, or visit or go to the flea market or K, uh, Walmart, Kmart, and give out tracts. That's great. That's really a good step. But you'll get more people face-to-face -face witnessing, bringing them in those doors by the bus ministry than any other. More than our radio ministry, more than our Internet ministry, the bus ministry is the greatest 
greatest, greatest, greatest ministry I know of. Uh, yesterday, uh, we went visiting, and I, I, seen, I seen these guys sitting on the step. Both of them was playing with the phone. There was one, there was one. And they was both sitting there. They was about 30 years old. And I said, how's it going, y'all? They looked at him. Pretty good. You know, like that. And, like, and I give them a track and invite them to church. And one of them said, oh, said, where is that church? And I told him, you know, so, and I talked to people. You talk to people. You talk to people. And then uh, I went to uh, this girl. These two ladies were out on a, like a little hallway there. And I talked to them. And this girl, uh, uh, she came out and I said, is this your daughter? She said, yes, it is. I said, you look like somebody. I said, you ever heard of Kevin Durant, uh, the basketball player? And she said, yeah. I said, you look like you could be his sister. And she laughed. She said that she thought that was the funniest thing. She said, I'm a big fan of his. I, I said, yeah, but I ain't going to get no $200 for no tennis shoes, are you? And she laughed. I said, I buy the cheap tennis shoes. They ain't got nobody's name on them. I put Brother D on the bottom or something like that and uh, uh, make them worth less than it was when I bought them for $49 or something. That's a lot. Uh, but anyway, you know what? That, that little girl called me this morning. My phone rang this morning. And I'm telling you, brother, on the other end of that phone, then they said, is this Shining Light Baptist Church? And I said, yes. I'm, uh, this, it's not the church, but this is, you know, I answer the phone. They call my number. I'm, I know I'm a preacher. And uh, I said, uh, yes, ma'am. She said, uh, she said, uh, uh, are you the, uh, the church that's going to bring the van by here? I said, you mean the bus? And I said, yes, yes, we sure will. I said, now, who are you? She told me her name. I couldn't pronounce it. And uh, she, I said, uh, what, you want to come? And she said, yeah. And I said, now, now which bus, who, how do you, who, who, who visited you? I didn't know if it was Lenore, uh, Hickory, over yonder in Morgan, over there in Morgan, or, or down this way in Valdez where Sandy and them goes. I, uh, she said, who visited you? She said, some white guy came by here. I said, well, that narrows it down, uh, uh, most of it. And uh, I thought, is that way she stereotypes me like that? And uh, I, I said, I laughed. I said, I think that was me. I said, do you live down there in the hilltop? She said, yeah. And she came this morning and rode uh, uh, Miss Angie's bus there. She she came, that little girl come. She's 11 or 12 years old. Many of you seen her. She was in Alicia's Sunday school class. I said, glory to God. Listen, they ain't no other way in the world you could have got that kid out of Hickory and got her to shine a light, baby. And buddy, she seen it this morning. She seen it when people were shouting. She saw it when people was coming to the altar. She got a taste of the real thing. You do realize, people, they'll never forget what they see and hear here when the power of God moves and the Holy Ghost comes and they say, there's something real I saw at the house of God. Lord in mercy, how are you going to beat that? How are you going to beat that? Uh, uh, say, number one, it's the greatest outreach in America. Number two, the bus ministry, listen to this, provides an opportunity for the whole family to serve God. This ain't just for the men. You know, you know, if we're going to come up here and paint Sunday school, it's just for the men, maybe for the women. Most stuff people do is for the adults. Not everything people do in church is for the adults or for the kids. The bus ministry, everybody can get in on it. As a matter of fact, no education required. As a matter of fact, no age limit. Is there an age limit on people going to bus? No. Actually, Actually, these younger kids can do better at it than older people can. Amen. They sure can. Old Marty back there, she goes every week. We take Ethan with us. And you know what? You know what? Do you realize? Do you realize that when kids come out and they're playing out here on their bicycle and they see another kid... And I tell Ethan, I said, here, you give him the candy. And he gives them the candy. And they, I say, yeah, he comes, he comes. And she, and Andrea, Jessica's little sister, Jessica, that's why. I mean, think about it, people. If you're, if you're eight years old playing out in the yard and, and somebody like me and him comes up, hey, little boy, you want to go something? <laughs> no, get away from me. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, but think these girls and these teenagers and these young people. I mean, it's natural for them. It's natural for them to say, yeah, I want to go. I want to go to that church. I'd like to see what's going on there. Amen. The whole family. I tell you who's one of the best bus workers I ever known is Aniston. Aniston Benny. I'm telling you, buddy, she is 
fearless. She has no fear. She'll go knock on a, a, a drug dealer's door and not think nothing about it. A German shepherd can be in front yard. It don't matter. I mean, she'll grab tracks and go. She'll chase uh, it down to try to knock on door. That's good. You just don't know. You want a family activity? Would y'all like a family activity? You say, we're taking our family up to, to hike on Mount Mitchell. Or we're taking our family up down to the, uh, to the orphan. That's good. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But I tell you, you want a family activity. Take little boys and little girls and say, you know what? We're going to hit that trailer park up on 106 Saturday and invite everybody there to the house of God on Sunday and watch what God does. So another guy hit me up this morning. He tried to buy money off of me yesterday. And he's walking toward the store. I said, man, I, and I purposely don't take money on me when I go out on the bus route. Purposely. I just, I have no money on me. And, uh, but this morning he hit me again. And I broke down and gave him a little bit. I, but he, but he, he, uh, he was going toward the store yesterday. And I thought, now, uh, I, 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 I thought, I ain't going to buy him no wine. And he said, a preacher, no, 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 no I, I just want a few cigarettes. <laughs> I ain't going to buy no cigarettes neither. Amen. That's a little, that's a little better. But, <laughs> but I still ain't buying you nothing. And, uh, and, but he's funny. You know what? You know what? That, that, that's, uh, that's, he said, I'll pay you back next week. He promised me he'd pay me back next week. But I tell you what, brother, and uh, I got hit two or three times this morning. Somebody else, somebody else stopped me back there and said, I don't even know this person, who this person is. Said, My sister said they're about ready to lose their house. Uh, they're buying on their light bill, and they want to know if you'd help them. And I said, how much is it? And they said, $700. Seven hundred dollars for a light bill? Lord, what she do? Leave every light in the house on there and, uh, and, uh, and uh, air conditioning 24 hours a day? I think she got behind three months or so. That's still a lot. That's still a big light bill, brother. 200 and something dollars a month. Uh, but anyway, you get into stuff like that, but it provides an opportunity for the whole family to serve God. As a matter of fact, there are in some churches second and third generation bus workers that God uses. Number three, Number three, let me say this. You know why we believe in the bus ministry? Because the bus ministry, listen to me, the bus ministry don't just save souls, save lives. If somebody gets saved when they're young, it saves a whole life of messing up, hopefully. And I've seen it work. I've seen it happen. I know people that are in the bus ministry right now that goes, Brother Gene them run the buses. Sam and them run buses. Nemana still runs a bunch of buses. We run buses. We're the only group, I don't know of any other churches from McDowell, Burke, Catawba, that, that run a consistent evangelistic door-to-door -door bus ministry. There are a few, but nothing like what we've got here in this county. Our bus ministry is unique in this county. Nothing like it in this county. Thank God, God give us this opportunity. Thank God. Listen, us them big shot preachers wouldn't spit on me if I was on fire. And that's all right. That's okay. I can live with that. But I'll tell you what, them little kids and their mamas and their daddies say, you know what? That's my preacher right there. And I like Brother Danny. And I don't hear him preach. And that's just fine with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Like Ohio said, I'll take the best kids. They save lives, not souls. We all hear testimonies of people that got on drugs and they come through it and God delivered me. That's good. But the best testimony in the world is somebody can stand up and say, I never was on drugs. I never been drunk. I never got saved when I was 10 years old and served God ever since. That's the best testimony they are. You'll never get on on big TV show like that. But that's the best testimony they are. The saved life, not just to save souls. Amen. I told you this morning, 60,000 people died in 2016 by drug overdoses. 60,000. And a lot of these kids believe that they are doomed to repeat the cycle. Mama's always on drugs, so I'm on drugs. Daddy's always drunk and living off the government, so I'll always be drunk and live off the government. And they believe that they're cursed, somehow cursed, to live in the same and I'm telling you this evening, there's nothing in the Bible that said a child has to follow the sins of their parents. Nothing in the Bible. Nothing in the Word of God. My daddy was a drunk. 
That ain't no, that ain't no excuse. Listen, God can do anything with anybody if he'll let him save lives. I'm going to tell you something. It reaches a segment of the population that would never be reached otherwise. Let's just face it. Big shot preachers ain't going to go to some place. Ain't going to go to Sin City over here in Valdez. All of y'all ought to come one Saturday and go to Sin City with Sandy and Miss Desi. All of you. Sin City's over there in Valdez with those parts. I don't know why they, well, I do know why they call it that. Uh, it's, it's, that's what they call all of it. Boo Shell over there in, in Morganton, Hilltop down there, where, where we was talking about a minute ago, and then Fisher Park, all the trailer park, not just trailer park. I mean, listen, there's places, there's places that you don't even know exist. Till you're riding down the road one day, and the Lord says, look, you say, I believe I'll go up this little driveway. And next thing you know, there's Marty. Next thing you know, there's a, and I'm telling you, bus workers, there's a whole bunch of little Martys out there somewhere. More and more, more. Uh, Crystal works for something, some big outfit, the government runs. And uh, I forgot how many, how many kids are in foster care in this county. Huh? 248 kids just in Morganton. That's a lot of kids for a town this high. And there's thousands and thousands of them that are on the brink, running the streets at night. It's time to share the message with the entire world around. We must reach the lost and lonely. Everybody needs to hear the sound. Jesus gave the commission how tragic it is to forget that we have an obligation, that we owe a big debt. The devil has succeeded in his wrong and wicked plot to blind the minds of Christians so they let the harvest rot. Our effort, time, and money go for things we don't even need while we let the unreached millions wander, grope, and wait, and plead. Have our hearts become so hardened? Can we hear their plaintive cry? Do we love our ease and comfort? more than souls that daily die? In the final day of judgment, when the Lord, before the Lord you stand, we have no shining trophies, will you come with an empty hand? It's heartless and unchristian to let millions longer dwell in their chains of sin and darkness and slip to the endless hell. It's time for every Christian to wake up and get on fire. It's time to work and witness with new passion and desire. Far too many lukewarm Christians sit or sleep or doze, but our watchword must be action. It's time the saints arose. So sleep in hardened Christian, cursed with heartless unconcern. It's time to wait on Jesus till your heart will break and burn. Let's all be up and at it. We must work while it is day. Ere the dying millions perish, we must reach them while we may. I'll say one more thing, and I'm going to show you something else. The last thing I'm going to say is the foundation for the next generation. Thousands of bus kids can and will teach their children what real church is. Many come back in in their 20s with two or three kids. We have it happen here every once in a while. I meet people. I met boys over there playing ball at the gym. I said, hey, you go to church anywhere? He said, I used to go to your church, and now they're bigger than me. I said, really? I, said, I used to come on the bus when I was 11, 12, 13. I said, good, man. You need to come back. And I'm telling you something. They ain't forgot what they heard you guys preach back there in that junior church. They ain't forgot it. They ain't forgot it. The Word of God gets in their heart. We went yesterday. It was a rough day. It was hot. Dennis, Brother Dennis and Gina canceled a trip to go see his dad to help us just because we we're so short-handed. Miss Eva, Blanca, and Kelly went and covered all that over yonder, John's route. Then Kelly went to Lenore and did Vicky's because Vicky's out of town. She left yesterday at 9 o'clock and got home about 7 last night. Thank God for her. I sent her a text and said, you don't know how much I appreciate you doing this. And buddy, we seen them come in here this morning. Worst Sunday of the year. And brother, we had a good crowd come in on the buses this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I'd hate to hear them screaming on the judgment day. Shining light, you never told me. You never told me. Let's watch one more. I love this song. I love this song. Sound like Willie Nelson, but I like it. I don't even like Willie Nelson, but I like this. He ought to sing this if he'd get right with God. Amen. I'll try to get it on. Get up a little bit. Staring out the window As the rain comes pouring down My heart soars to this. as he rounds the bend Woo! He's always right on time that's your bus worker. He greets me with candy. Amen. And a big smile on his face. Oh, Lord. An angel on my doorstep in this ungodly place. Then he drives me to Sunday school where they teach about God's grace. I learned that I'm a sinner, but I don't have to die that way. Amen. Cause Jesus shed his blood yeah, for man. Me on Calvary. Woo! Sunday. Glory to God, hallelujah. When it's Can't time wait till Saturday. To go back home, yeah, man. I'm wishing I could stay, but my Lord will protect me. As I trust him and obey yep. For my Savior lives within me Yes, thank God I was lost, but now I'm saved Yep, man Yep, man I thank God that Jesus died For little kids like us Yes, thank God In his wisdom he had planned someone who cared Woo, glory to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank God for the buses. Thank you, Amen. Lord, for sending me the captain of the bus. I still remember singing. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know. Yes, thank God. So grateful for the peace I've found and the joy that fills my soul. So if you're lost and searching, confused and all yeah, alone, the shepherd came to give you life if only you will come. Our Father sends His servants Amen. to make His presence known. Amen. Amen. And I thank God that Jesus died for little kids like us. Yes. In His wisdom, He had planned someone who cared enough. Amen. Heart soft spoken, gentle with his touch. Thank you, Lord, for sending me the captain of Amen. The bus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for Jesus, the captain of <laughs> Woo!
right, Timmy. Now, you know sometimes you want to wring their neck just like you do your own kids. But every one of them little kids has a soul and they're going to burn in hell forever or they're going to live with Jesus in heaven. That Bible's true. If the Bible ain't true, we ain't got no right to even open these doors and be in here. If it is true, we're criminals, criminals to hide that message from a lost and dying world. Miss Desi, I want you to come and play. We'll just pray for you a minute here this evening. And I want us to bow our head, please, and close our eyes. And I want you to ask God what he wants you to do. with the Maybe you have to work and everything. You just want to give money or help next week with a festival. Or something. I know everybody can't work on the bus. For, I understand that. But some of you can. Some of you can. We need some men who will drive, get a license and drive all the time. We need drivers. We need workers. We need helpers. And I wondered, you just ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me do? Prayer. Just people that will pray. People will just pray. Pray all the time for bus kids. If you need to come, just come to the altar. Come on, we'll make a fresh new start here tonight. Hit it hard this coming Saturday. And I believe that Sunday we'll see a bunch of people get saved. I believe that. I believe that. Uh, I told Joey this morning, and plan something special for Junior Church next Sunday and, and try to get lost souls saved. And I'm telling you, folks, that's all that's going to matter one of these days. That's all that's going to matter. You say, preacher.